Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Wendy's Kooky Crochet Tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute Oogie Boogie inspired beanie. This would be really cute with um, the green yarn also, so like the spring green from Red Heart. Um, or you could do the yarn that I've used. This is the buff color from Red Heart. And I'll have my affiliate links down in the description below so you can see exactly what I used to make this. So to start out with, I've got my, of course, my yarn. I've got my size chart, and you can find that in my um, community page. I've got my crochet hook, and this is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And my buff yarn, you can see, is the Red Heart Super Saver yarn. And um, you can, of course, you could buy it at Walmart. You can buy that at lots of places. But if you want to order it online, I'll leave the link for you to do that. I need a measuring tape. So this hat I'm going to make to the adult medium size. So that means that it needs to be the six and a half um, diameter. But after I made it, I looked back at it. And really what I need to do is I need to measure the circumference of the hat. So the circumference is 20 inches and that does make a difference. So whenever you're making that, make sure you measure it all the way around because it came out a little bit smaller when I, when I didn't do it. And I think it's because this one um, has a little bit more shape to it. You're also going to need your scissors and you're going to use your yarn needle. And having the yarn needle is actually really important on this because you have um, things to sew onto it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a double magic ring. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll link my video on how to do that in the description below. Now I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to make eight double crochets in the magic ring so i'm just going to work eight double crochets into that magic ring here and then at the end what i'm going to do is i'm going to tighten my magic ring i usually pull the tail end first um, just to see what I'm working with and get that a little bit tight and then i pull that string in the middle to make it extra tight. That way I don't have to worry about it coming loose or kind of coming undone at all. So here I'm just working those double crochets into my magic ring. So now I'm pulling the tail end, and you see how it kind of bunched that one up in the middle. So now I'm pulling that one that's bunched up, and I'm making that other one really tight. And now I'm going to pull the tail end again. And now I'm going to slip stitch that first double crochet that I made. And I like to count it just to make sure, especially on this first one, that I'm working into the right stitch. So now I'm just slip stitching through there. I'm going to chain two and now I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. So each of the double crochets on the uh, round that I just did. I'm starting, I'm not starting in the one that I connected to. I'm starting in that next double crochet. So here, this row number two is going to have a total of eight double crochets around. So I'm just going to be making eight double crochets in the second row. And then the next row, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to make a total of eight double crochets for that third row. And um, of course, that's one double crochet in each stitch around. And then I'm going to slip stitch with the first stitch that I made, not the chain two, the first stitch that I made. So here I'm chaining two. Now I'm just going to do one double crochet in each of those stitches around. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to do an increase row. But here um, you're going to have a total of three rows of eight double crochets each row. So don't want you to get confused there. So you're just going to have a total of um, three rows that has eight double crochets in each row. And 
and now I'm slip stitching to that first stitch that I made and I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to do two double crochets in each stitch around that'll make this row have a total of 16 double crochets so again I'm just doing two double crochets in each stitch around and then when I get back to the first I'm going to slip stitch into the first double crochet that I made and then again that'll be a total of 16 double crochets on this round So I'm finishing up this round now and I'm just going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two I'm going to do one double crochet in each of these stitches that I just made so this one will also have 16 total double crochets in this round and then I'm going to repeat that one more time so I will have a total of three rounds of 16 double crochets in each round And I'm just continuing around doing one double crochet in each of those stitches on my previous round. And I'm going to repeat this um, two times total. So here I'm just um, half or I'm slip stitching in that first double crochet made. I chain two and I'm doing another round of double crochets in each one of those um, double crochets that I made from the previous round. And then that'll give me a total of 16 double crochets for this round also. And then when I'm done with this round, I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet I made. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to do two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get to the first double crochet I made on this round. So again, what I'm doing is I am just doing two double crochets in that first stitch or that stitch right there and then I'm doing one double crochet in that next stitch and then I'm just repeating that pattern and I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around and on this row I'm going to have a total of 24 stitches on this row And then when I finish up this row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. I'm going to chain two and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one double crochet in each of those double crochets from the previous row. So that again will give me a total of 24 double crochets in this row. And um, I'm going to repeat that one more time. So I'll have a total of three rows that have 24 double crochets in each row. And um, when I slip stitch, what I'm doing is I'm slip stitching to the first double crochet that I made. I'm not slip stitching to that chain two. So I'm going to kind of ignore that chain two or pretend that it's not even there. And the reason that I'm doing that like that is because I don't like the way it looks when you um, slip stitch into that chain two. It kind of leaves a little hole there. And um, I really just, I don't like the look. I don't like leaving a hole there. And here I'm just slip stitching and now I'm chaining two. 
and now I'm going to again do double crochets all the way around on this row just one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around and at the end I'm going to slip stitch into the first double crochet I made and this will have a total of 24 double crochets in each of these and guys if you're liking what you've seen please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this video hit the like button and um, if you want to see all the fun new videos I have coming out please ring the bell it really helps me out and I have such a great time making these patterns for you guys and um, I hope you're enjoying following along with me and making this um, this pattern in particular and this series that I'm doing the nightmare before Christmas series is really fun for me and I have really had a great time making these patterns for you so on this next round what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two I'm going to do two double crochets in that first stitch and then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next two stitches and then I'm going to repeat this all the way around so two double crochets in that next stitch and then one double crochet in the each of the next two stitches and then I'm just going to repeat that pattern all the way around and then on this one I'm going to have a total of 32 stitches on this round so at the end of this round I will have a total of 32 stitches So I'm almost at the end here and I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to do one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And I'm going to repeat this again. So after I get done with this round, I'm going to repeat that one more time. So I'll have 32 total double crochets in this round and then the next round it'll be the same exact thing I'll have 32 double crochets in the next round And if you get confused like I did there, I was like, did I do that right? You can always go back, look at your stitches. You can count your stitches to see how many you've done or um, that helps you know how many that you have left on this round too. So not everybody likes counting their stitches. I pretty much always count mine though. It makes it, um, honestly, it just makes it easier for me and then I know that I'm doing it exactly the way I'm supposed to do it. And now I'm just going to finish this round off. I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to repeat that again all the way around. So I'm just going to do one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And when I'm done with this round, I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. So again, I'm ignoring that chain two area or that chain two stitch and then I'm slip stitching in the first double crochet that I made. And this row will have a total of 32 double crochets. So 32 double crochets on this row.
So there I just chained two and now I'm doing two double crochets in that first stitch and then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then I'm just going to repeat that pattern. So I'm going to do two double crochets in the next stitch and then th three or one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. It's kind of a tongue twister for me there. So two double crochets in one stitch and one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then this row will have a total of 40 stitches in it. So 40 stitches on this row total. And see so you're going to just repeat that pattern. You're going to repeat it all the way around till you get to the first double crochet that you made and you're going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that you made. So you're going to just repeat this pattern all the way around. So I'm getting close to being all the way around. So when I get to the end here, again, I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two. So I'm chaining one, two, and now I'm going to just do double crochets all the way around. And this will again have 40 double crochets on this round total. So I'm just going to continue doing the double crochets one in each stitch all the way around with 40 total and if for some reason you have a hard time seeing which was the first one you made then you could always put a stitch marker in that that's really really helpful to do if you have a hard time seeing the first one you made the double crochets are usually pretty easy for you to see where you're at but um, if you're doing a single crochet or half double crochet that could be a little bit harder to see so again it may be helpful for you to put um, to put a stitch marker in some of those. So I'm just going all the way around doing double crochets. So now I just slip stitched into that first stitch that I made and now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to double crochet in each of those next stitches and again I'm just counting them again. I like to count to see how far along I've come. So for this next round what I'm doing is I'm doing two double crochets in that first stitch and then I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches around and then I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way down and on this row I'm going to have 48 total stitches and one good thing about this is if you get confused and you need to go back to where you did the two double crochets that'll tell you where you're at and so you can count from there so I'm just doing two double crochets in one stitch and then I'm doing one double crochet in each of the next four stitches and then I'm repeating that pattern all the way around till I get to the very first double crochet that I made and then I'm going to slip stitch into that very first cro double crochet that I made so again I'm ignoring the uh, chain two that I made at first
Now, when I get to the end of this round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made, and I'm going to chain two, and now I'm going to do one double crochet in each stitch around. And that's going to be another total of 48 double crochets on this round. So I'm going to just going to do one double crochet in each stitch made. I'm going to work that all the way around and I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet that I made. So now I'm just slip stitching into that first double crochet that I made. I'm going to chain two and um, now I'm just going to count again how many rows that I have there. So this next one I'm going to do two double crochets in the first stitch then I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next five stitches and that's going to have 56 double crochets on this row. So Again, I'm just doing two double crochets in one stitch, and then I'm doing one double crochet in each of the next five stitches, and then I'm repeating that all the way around till I get to the end. And then when I get to the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch to the first double crochet I made. So I'm, again, I'm going to ignore that chain stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch into the first double crochet that I made. So I'm just repeating this all the way around. And then again, this row will have a total of 56 double crochets in it. And here I'm just slip stitching to that first double crochet that I made and I chained two just now and now I'm laying it flat and I'm going to measure it so I decided that I needed to measure it all the way around so the circumference of the hat and the reason I decided to do this is because when I um, was measuring it like this it looks like the hat should be big enough but it really isn't big enough so I needed to make sure that I was actually doing um, the hat as big as it needed to be. So then I decided to, I was going to measure all the way around. So here I just chained two and now I'm doing one double crochet in each stitch around and that'll be a total of 56 double crochets for this round. So I'm just doing one double crochet in each of these stitches around and then I'm going to slip stitch to that first double crochet that I made.
So now I'm just going to slip stitch to that first double crochet that I made. And I'm going to get out the measuring tape again and I'm going to try to measure it again. And this time I am just going to show you how I'm going all the way around this to make sure that it is the right circumference that I need not just the diameter since you see it's kind of like maybe a little bit of a U shape there so I don't think it's coming out exactly right when I just do the diameter so I'm going to go around the whole circumference and so I can see here that I have about 17 inches and what I need for an adult medium is 20 inches so I need to add some more rows here so what I'm doing on this one is I'm going to chain two i'm going to do two double crochets in the first stitch and i'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next six stitches and then i'm going to repeat this all the way around and this round will have a total of 64 double crochets and again i'm just repeating that sequence so i'm doing two double crochets in the first stitch and one double crochet in each of the next six stitches and then I'm repeating that all the way around until I get to the first double crochet that I made and when I do that I'm going to do what I keep been doing and I'm just going to slip stitch into that very first double crochet that I made. So now I'm just slip stitching to that first stitch that I made, so that first double crochet. I chain two, and now I'm going to double crochet, one double crochet in each of the stitches around. And again, this one will have a total of 64 double crochets in this round. And so again, I'm just doing double crochets, one in each stitch all the way around until I get to the very first double crochet that I made. And I'm gonna slip stitch into that very first double crochet that I made. And then, um, and then you will have 64 double crochets in this round total.
Now here I'm just slip stitching to that first single crochet that I made and I went ahead and chained two. So here I'm just going to, I counted my rows again. So now this is my row 20 for me. So it took me 20 rows to get the circumference that I needed. So now I'm just going to do one double crochet in each stitch around until I get the height that I need. So on the chart, it says for an adult medium that you really need about seven inches in height, but you can't really go by that very well just because it has so much height because of the pointy part of the beanie. So here you're just going to kind of need to, honestly what I did was I just tried it on until I thought it was good. So for me, I ended up doing this part from row 20 on. So I ended up, that part was about three and a half to four inches and that fit me really, really well. So I know that it would fit most adults if that fit me very well. Now, um, if you have a, a smaller child, then you probably need to go with a little bit less, but you can usually kind of eye it and tell what you need to do. So if it was a newborn, so if it was an infant, I would probably from that last stitch that I, or the last round that I made um, that had the increases, I would probably do about two and a half inches probably from that and um, go from there and then I would just work my way up from there. So again for me that's about three and a half to four inches from the round 20 and here what I'm going to do after I get done with this next round what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that 20th round that way I know where I started just working down at and where I stopped doing my increases at and that's going to help me measure later on. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing a black piece of yarn and I'm putting it through that 20th stitch, the bottom of that 20th stitch so I know where to measure from. So I'm just again, I'm going one double crochet in each stitch around and then when I get to the first one that I made, I'm slip stitching into that first stitch that I made and then I'm chaining two and I'm continuing doing one double crochet in each stitch around until I get the height that I need. And again, this one that I need is going to be around three and a half to four inches um, where it sits on the head comfortably at. So from where I marked that stitch at, so where I put that black yarn at, I'm going to need three and a half to four inches from where I put that black yarn at to fit an adult medium size head. And again, I'm just going around and around and around until I get to that height that I need. You can pause this video also anytime you want to. Um, I sped it up because I didn't want you guys to be really bored just watching me do double crochets and slip stitches and chain stitches for, you know, 40 minutes here, however long it took me to do it. So just remember, you can pause this video anytime you like.
Now I've gotten to the height that I need, so between three and a half and four. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut my yarn here, and then I'm gonna pull my black yarn through. So this is going to be kind of my finishing round for this. So I'm gonna pull my black yarn through. I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to do a single crochet, chain one, and then a single crochet. And so I'm gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches before, then I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna do a single crochet in the next stitch. So I'm gonna repeat that pattern all the way around. And the reason that I like this is it looks kind of bumpy here, so it's not um, just 100% even, and I think that looks great with Oogie Boogie. And so here I'm just repeating that same pattern all the way around till I get to the very first one that I made. And when I get to the very first single crochet that I made, I'm going to um, slip stitch into that very first single crochet. And so again, I'm just, I'm doing a single crochet in a stitch and then I'm chaining one and then I'm doing a single crochet in the next stitch and then chaining one and I'm repeating that pattern all the way around until I get to the very first one that I made. And I'm just finishing this off and I'm going to slip stitch into that very first single crochet that I made and I'm going to cut my black yarn and I'm just going to pull it through and what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to turn it over and instead of weaving all of these in I'm just going to tie them in a knot and cut them off honestly I think that's quite a bit easier. I'm pulling everything to the back and then I'm just going to tie this off. And if you think, if you're afraid it might come undone after you tie it off, you could always put a little fabric glue on there. Fabric glue, it doesn't leave it quite as stiff as um, like what regular glue would. So you could put a little fabric glue on there if you want to, but really I don't even think that's necessary. Um, this is a pretty tight knot, so I don't really think it's necessary that you do that, but you can if you want to. And then I'm just going to cut those pieces of yarn that are hanging there. And then I'm going to turn it over. So what do you think, guys? I think it's looking super cute so far. So now the next step on doing this is going to be making the mouth. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated making the mouth. So I'm going to take my black yarn and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain enough stitches to go all the way across the um, kind of front part of this beanie here. So I'm going to need the chain enough to kind of go across that bottom section right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in multiples of five. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need um, 35 chain stitches. I'm still, I'm still using the same hook, the five and a half millimeter hook. So I just made a slip knot onto my hook and then I'm going to need 35 stitches plus one because one is my turning stitch. 
and then I'm doing this in multiples of five. You could do it in multiples of four if you need less or three if you need less. And I think you'll understand what I'm talking about here in a minute after I get my um, 36 chain stitches done. And again, that one that's closest to my hook is not going to count because it's just a turning stitch. So here, that looks pretty good. I, you know, that goes almost all the way across. So I like the way that looks. So that's really what I'm looking for here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do five single crochets, five half double crochets, five double crochets, five triple crochets, and then I'm going to go back down and I'm going to do five double crochets, five half double crochets, um, and then five single crochets. And then I'm going to be done with the mouth. And this will give it a little bit of curve to it. But um, if you need yours to be smaller instead of, you know, doing less on each end, you want to do less of each one of those. So that's actually seven different stitches that you're doing so you're doing five of each of these seven different stitches that so I'm making five single crochets five half double crochets five double crochets five triple crochets five uh, double crochets five half double crochets and five single crochets all the way down that chain but if your hood is or your um, beanie I mean is smaller then you would you could do multiples of four or you could even do multiples of three especially if you were doing um, for an infant or something like that um, you could do multiples of three or multiples of four and it would be just as cute so again I'm starting in that second chain from my hook and I'm going down the chain I'm doing five double or ha I'm doing five single crochets in the chain Oof. And now I'm doing five half double crochets. So you do one per chain. You're not doubling up, you're just doing one per chain. So that's three half double crochets, that's four half double crochets, and that's five half double crochets. Now I'm doing a total of five double crochets. So that's one double crochet, that's two double crochets, and again, I'm only doing one double crochet here per chain. So one stitch per chain. All right, now I'm gonna do triple crochet. So I'm gonna do five triple crochets. That's one. Two, and again one per chain so you're not doubling up on anything here you're just doing one per chain and then after this you're going to be going back down to double crochets so here I'm going to do double crochets now so a total of five double crochets right down the chain then when I'm done with the double crochets I'm going to do half double crochets so I'm going to do five half double crochets right down the chain now And then when I'm done doing half double crochets, then I'm going to do five single crochets. And then that, that means I will be all the way down the chain and I have no more chain stitches left to work in when I get done with that five single crochets at the end.
So now I'm just looking at it, seeing what I think, if I like in the way it looks, and I do like the way it looks. So now I'm just going to cut my yarn, and I should have left a piece long, and I did not um, do that, but if you, I would leave a piece long if I were you, that's, um, it'll be easier for you to sew that on. And um, what I'm doing is I'm just, after this, I'm just gonna cut that excess off. And then I'm going to put the mouth aside and then start working on the eyes. But I like the way it curves, so I like it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a magic ring and I'm gonna chain one. I'm gonna do eight half double crochets in my magic ring. And so I had to start all over there. Um, so here I'm just going to chain one in my magic ring and then I'm going to do eight half double crochets in that magic ring. And then when I get my eight half double crochets done, I'm going to pull my magic ring tight and then I'm going to join with the first half double crochet that I made. And black can be a little bit hard to see, so I always try to count it to make sure I'm working in the right one. Because again, black can be just a little bit hard to see if you're working in the right stitch or not. So here I'm just counting, making sure that I have eight and I'm working in that correct stitch. So I'm gonna slip stitch into that stitch. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain one again, and then I'm going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, and then the next stitch, I'm gonna do two half double crochets in that next stitch. And then the next stitch, I'm gonna do one double crochet. And then the stitch after that, I'm going to do one triple crochet. And then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm gonna do another triple crochet all in that same stitch. And then the next stitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one double crochet. Then the stitch after that, I'm gonna do two half double crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. Then the stitch after that, I'm gonna do one single crochet. The stitch after that, I'm going to do two single crochets. So in this stitch, I'm gonna do two single crochets. The stitch after that, I'm gonna do one single crochet. And then the stitch after that, I'm gonna do two single crochets. And now I'm going to just slip stitch to that first stitch that I made. And I'm seeing that it's starting to take shape, so I've only got one more. Um, round to do on this on this eye and then I'm going to repeat it and do it all over again so now I'm going to chain one I'm going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches so that's two three and then four and then that chain space on that triple and that middle space I'm going to do one single crochet one double crochet and then I'm going to chain one. And now I'm gonna do one double crochet. And then I'm gonna do one single crochet all in that chain space that I made last time. So it comes to a nice point. Now I'm gonna do four single crochets. So a total of one single crochet in the next four stitches, I should say. And then the next stitch after that, I'm going to do two single crochets. So 
So the next four stitches, so those will be the last four remaining. I'm going to do two single crochets in each of those next four stitches. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to be really, really rounded on um, that side. So that'll make it super rounded. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the first stitch I made, and then I'm going to cut my yarn. But when I cut my yarn, I'm going to leave it long. That way I'll have plenty of yarn left over to sew my eye onto my beanie. So now I'm just slip stitching to that first single crochet that I made. And then I'm going to leave my yarn long. So I finally figured out I need to leave my yarn long. And now I'm just going to pull it through. And then I'm going to pull it to the back with my crochet hook. So that way it'll be ready to stitch onto my beanie. And now I'm going to repeat what I just did one more time. But I like how that's looking. I like the cone shape there. Um, it's looking really cute. So now I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. So I'm going to make a magic ring. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do eight half double crochets in that magic ring. And then after I do my eight half double crochets, I'm going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet that I made. So I'm pulling it close, pulling it tight, the tail, tight as I can get it. And now I'm going to count just to make sure I'm putting my slip stitch in the right stitch. So I'm going to count my eight half double crochets and then I'm going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet that I made. And then now I'm going to chain one, then I'm going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to do two half double crochets in the neck in the stitch after that. Then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next stitch. And then the next stitch I'm going to do one triple crochet. And then I'm after I do my one triple crochet, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another triple crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next stitch and then the stitch after that I'm going to do two half double crochets and then I'm going to do one single crochet in that next stitch so that next stitch I'm going to do one single crochet then the next one I'm going to do two single crochets the stitch after that I'm going to do one single crochet And then this last stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets in that very last stitch. There's one. And then two. And now I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch I made there. And I'm going to chain one. And my, my yarn's a bit of a mess, so I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. But now I'm going to continue and I'm going to do one single crochet in that first stitch. So I'm going to do one single crochet in actually first four stitches. Three and that next one's four. Okay and that next stitch should be your chain space. So in your chain space you're going to do one single crochet, one double crochet, you're going to chain one, then you're going to do one double crochet, and then one single crochet. And now you're going to do one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So there's one, two, 
three, four. And now you're going to do two single crochet in each of the next five stitches and when you're done with that you will be where you started and then you're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet that you made and then you're going to um, cut your yarn tie it off and then we're going to start sewing everything together so here i'm just doing two single crochets in each stitch till I get to that very first single crochet that I made. Now I'm just slip stitching in that first stitch and I like it. I think it looks really good. So now I'm going to cut my yarn long so I'll have a way to sew it up and I'm just going to pull it through and um, pull it to the back. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work um, that little piece of yarn there that's, uh, that we made the magic ring with. I'm gonna work that in a bit and then I'm just going to cut it so it doesn't come loose. So I'm gonna do that on both of the eyes. So I'm just gonna go back and forth a bit working that in. And I decided to grab a smaller crochet hook because sometimes it's a little bit easier to work it in. If you have a smaller crochet hook, um, it fits in between the stitches better than the hook that you use to make them. So again, I'm just working that in back and forth so, so it won't work its way loose at all. And then when I'm satisfied with working it in, I'm just going to cut it and then I'm going to start placing everything onto my beanie. So now I've got my eyes and I've got my mouth and um, something that was handy here that I should have said you can have you could do bobby pins or something like that to pin this on so that way when you're working with it um, it doesn't move and if you don't have any then it's not a problem you can just kind of do it as you go but I do like to pin mine on just because I don't want it moving around you could even do it with straight pins if you wanted to if you have any of those laying around So there's only three stitches between the two eyes. So the two eyes, there's three stitches in between the two eyes there. So, so I'm starting at the bottom with the eyes on the sixth stitch from the bottom. So if you count your rows from the bottom up, I'm starting the eyes on the bottom part of that sixth stitch and then I'm doing three stitches apart and um, that's going to end up being the very middle of this beanie. So now I'm just kind of manipulating the mouth to how I want it to look and you can do this any way you want to. You could have the frown upside down. You could have it um, a little bit more open. I kind of like mine like oogie boogie smiling a little bit so I kind of like mine like that. So that's how I'm going to pin mine. And then after I get it all pinned down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my yarn needle and I'm going to get a long piece of black yarn. And I'm just going to attach that piece of black yarn to the back with a knot. And again, if I was smart, I would have left one of those strands attached to the mouth, one of those black strands long. That way I could just sew it on. But I didn't do that. So now I'm doing it this way. So now I'm just going back and forth here, sewing the mouth on. And um, after I get the mouth sewed on, then I'm going to sew the eyes on. And I like taking the pins out right after I've sewed a piece on. It gives me um, a feeling of satisfaction taking the pins out. So here I'm just going back and forth again, sewing this on. And you can see me kind of leaning over, trying to look at this a bit more while I'm sewing it on. But again, I'm just going back and forth here, sewing it on. And 
And you can always, as you're sewing along, you can kind of manipulate those curves too. If you decide you like it, want it a little bit different, you can kind of manipulate those curves to get it the way you want it. So now that I finished sewing the mouth on, I'm just going to cut the cut the yarn there, and I'm actually leaving a long piece of yarn attached, and you'll see why I did that here in a little bit. So now I'm going to start sewing the eyes on. So I'm just going to go around the eye, just like I did the mouth, and just sew that right on there. And again, it can move a little bit even when you have it pinned on. So just make sure that you are. Um, you know adjusting and um, seeing which way that it's going so it doesn't get out of place so I'm just going all the way around that eye sewing that on and then after I'm done with that I'm going to cut that yarn I'm going to tie it in a knot and then I'm going to cut that yarn I'm going to move on to the next eye and as you can see I pulled that eye down some so it would be more pointy I really like the way that looks and I'm going to go through that point more than one time that way I can make sure that point really holds and then I'm just going to continue going all the way around that eye and then I'm going to repeat what I just did for the next eye. So here I'm turning it over and I'm just going to tie that off and then I'm going to clip my yarn and I'm going to move on to the next eye. Now again, I'm just tying this piece of yarn off and then I'm going to move back to the mouth after I tie this off. So I'm going to get my yarn needle. I'm going to put it back in the string that we didn't cut off of the mouth earlier. I'm going to take all of my safety pins out and now I'm just going to make little lines. 
um, in the mouth and you can make them longer than me you don't have to make them the same height that I'm making them um, I made those a little bit more shallow because I didn't want to really get into the eye area but again you can make this longer than me and it is super super cute longer too so you can do it either way you want to do it so this is your beanie and now I'm just going back and forth around, putting little lines in the mouth there so it looks more like Oogie Boogie. And I didn't like where I put that line, which is the nice thing about when you're using a yarn needle, you can very easily just pull it out and then um, start again if you want to. So going all the way around, I probably should have cut a little bit longer of a piece because I don't think this piece is going to make it all the way around, but that's okay. You can always attach another piece and then keep on going from there. I always like putting one in the very end too. I think it looks cute when you have it in the very end. So now I'm gonna tie this piece off because I didn't make it long enough. So I'm just gonna tie this piece off and then I'm going to get another piece of yarn and I'm just gonna keep on going. So I'm gonna get a, another long piece of yarn there and I, I had one that I had already cut previously so I'm gonna just use that one to finish up this part of the mouth. I'm going to cut that yarn and then I'm just going to finish up the mouth here and just going back and forth making little stitches look like he's stitched together or maybe sewn together and coming out just a little bit. And then when I get done with this one I'm going to cut my yarn and that one I made a little bit long and I really didn't like that so I'm just taking that out and I'm going to try it again yeah that's much much better I think so here I'm just going to tie that one off and then I'm going to um, cut my yarn and then I'm going to go down the sides with the stitches I think that's really cute going down the sides. so I'm going to get another piece of yarn a long piece of yarn and um, I'm just going to cut it really really long hopefully I cut it long enough that I won't have to uh, get another piece of yarn here but um, I'm going to tie it into one corner so I'm going to lay this flat and I'm going to find the corner of it now so so I'm just going to start in one corner and I'm going to tie it into a back stitch in one corner I'm going to get my little scissors. I'm going to tie that or cut that and then I'm just going to go in and out. So I'm going to go up the hood and then I'm going to go across the stitches that I made. So here I'm going up the hood and you have to be careful because it can get a little bit uh, tangled up the yarn can when it's this long. And then I'm going across the stitches that I made too. And I like to make these a little bit bigger. I think that looks cute. I like the if you can see them from the back and the front. So that's kind of the goal here is to see it from the back and the front. So I might making them a little bit longer. And then as I go up the hood, I'll make them a little shorter. And one thing that you want to do on this is you don't want to pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight, then it's not going to, it's not going to look right. So you need to make sure that it's fairly loose, loose enough so um, it doesn't look bunched up or anything like that while you, when you're doing it. So again, I'm going all the way up the hood until I get to that point and here I'm doing it rather uniformly I don't usually do it very uniformly but I'm doing it rather uniformly here and I'm doing about skipping about three rows so there's about three rows in between and then when I get to that point I'm just going to push it in one end and then out the other and I'm going to go right back down the other side and then this side I'm not going to make this uniform across it's not going to be the same one it's going to be kind of in the middle of those so I'm just going to go back down and I'm not going in the same one I'm just going kind of in the middle of the last two or the last stitches on the other round so I'm still um, skipping three rows in the middle but I'm going in between those other rounds so it doesn't look too uniform 
I'm just going to keep doing that until I get to the very, very end. And guys, if you made it this far and if you enjoyed making this with me, please subscribe to my channel, um, push the like button and ring the bell so um, it'll really help me out. And um, that way you get to know when I have my new videos coming out. I have a lot of fun videos, different ones for different holidays coming out. So here we're about to finish up. And one thing I also want to tell you is um, this is a great seller at craft fairs. Um, also, um, I don't care if you make this and sell it at craft fairs, but if you do, please just, you know, direct people back to my channel if they want to make it themselves and um, don't write the pattern down or sell it or anything like that. Just, you know, or don't make another video of you making it. I would really appreciate that and just direct everybody back to my channel so they can have fun and make this with me. And thank you all for watching. I hope you really, really enjoyed making this. I really enjoyed coming up with it. Again, this would look great with the all green green also and it might even be fun with the pom-pom on top i didn't want to do that but it may be fun with that on top thanks for watching everybody and happy hooking